absolutely nuts to see Tesla down this morning. <laughs> and just two articles on Optimus. Tesla Roddy did a short piece. Business Insider did a snarky piece that wondered what the bot could do. I don't know. Such vision from these folks. I assume by now you've seen the video, the Cybertruck video uh, from last night. If you haven't, I will leave a card down below uh, at the very end. Uh, you want to see this video. I did it really fast last night so you guys could be among the first to see it. Uh, you have a breakthrough um, showing a humanoid robot that is so human-like in its movements that the viewers were positive it was fake. Maybe you were too. It is so strange to me that investors are not interested in owning Tesla stock just to have an option on Optimus. I mean, it just it's just crazy. Then you have interest rates headed south, another massive benefit to Tesla. The one thing Elon says of, of concern of his is going away. And then, of course, you have this Cybertruck breakthrough as well. Well, but here is where the market is concentrating this morning regarding Tesla. The headline says, Tesla recalls nearly all vehicles sold in the United States. Of course, you guessed it. It's an over-the-air update. But that's not what's in the headline. Barron cites the recall as the reason why the stock is down this morning. Now, there is also this, which has some real ramifications. From Sawyer Merritt, breaking, Tesla has received updated guidance from the IRS. The Model 3 rear-wheel drive and long range will lose the entire $7,500 federal EV credit starting January 1, 2024. Tesla previously thought the EV credit for those trims would be cut by to $3,750, but now the interpretation is zero. So you got to take delivery by the end of the year if you want the full tax credit. Tesla has already updated their Model 3 configuration page to take that into consideration. Well, that would be an important thing, but it's not really the thing that's being mentioned. I saw one article that mentioned it as maybe the reason why Tesla was a little bit off in the early going. Well, it does look like some smart money is moving towards Tesla. It opened way down in the red and especially down compared to the rest of the market and the rest of the Magnificent Seven, but it, is, it looks like it's moving toward the green fairly quickly last time I checked. All right, this is Randy Kirk. Please hit like, please hit subscribe, hit notify, buy these. It is now 12 days until Christmas. You have plenty of time. I've, do, I've done the math. <laughs> you can get these. Regular mail is going to take five days everywhere in the country. You're going to get it in five days, no problem. And for two or more, I'm sending it by special handling anyway. So it's only going to take two to three days. You know the rules on these. I'm going to give you all the information again at the end. But this is like the best Christmas gift you could get anybody where you're looking for a $25 or less price point. Uh, buyers, um, friends, associates, parties that you're going to where you need to trade gifts. This is going to be the hit wherever you go. All right. Um, we have got... Scott Walter going to be joining me later for a video to discuss the Optimate. What did Scott see that I'm sure we mere mortals missed? Then it will be Jeff Lutz at around 5 o'clock California time to talk about the market action today and the Fed. Boy, do we have a lineup for you today. This from Market Watch. This is a, the PPI, okay? This should have been the lead story, but oh my goodness, there was so much else to talk about. U.S. wholesale prices were unchanged in November as they were in October in another sign of gradually easing inflation. Cheaper gas gave a big assist to the benign inflation report, but prices in most major categories were also muted. Economists polled by the Wall Street Journal had forecast a 0.1% increase in the producer price index, but it was beat. We got zero flat. The flat reading in wholesale inflation follows on the heels of slightly warmer consumer, the slightly warmer consumer price report. What is it, slightly warmer? Both inflation barometers point to a sufficient slowdown in prices to keep the Federal Reserve on hold Wednesday after its big for last big meeting of the year. The central bank is widely expected to leave interest rates unchanged. That would be my call as well. I can't imagine them going any other direction. What we're looking for on the third leg today, remember we had three legs in school. We got the CPI, which came in fine. We got the PPI, which is now beating. And now we got the Fed, which hopefully will give some slight indication of dovishness. Just saying, even the words 
we will be looking at. Are we yesterday during their meeting, they contemplated and considered the possibility of cuts and when it would be appropriate to cut. Anything, any kind of language like that in today or in the talk when uh, when Fed Chairman Powell speaks at two o'clock Eastern time, any of that would be a help. All right, key details. The wholesale costs often foretell future inflation trends. By the way, there are there have been multiple, multiple, multiple studies done that show that you cannot make any correlation between the PPI and the CPI. It makes sense. It seems like it should, but there are all these other considerations of what's going into the CPI that are not part of just the raw PPI. So anyway, but say putting that aside, the increase in wholesale prices over the past 12 months slowed to 0.9% from 1.2 the prior month. A separate measure, here you go, the core wholesale prices, stripping out volatile food, energy, and trade margins edged up just 0.1% last month, the government said. Core prices are a better predictor of future inflation trends. The increase in these so-called core prices over the past year decelerated to 2.5% from 2.8, marking the lowest level since February 2021. Inside the report, energy prices sank 1.2% in November after a decline in the cost of oil. That held down the headline wholesale inflation reading. Food prices, however, rose a sharp 0.6%. We've been talking about that, led by a 59% increase in the price of eggs because of avian flu. The cost of services, a big source of recent inflation, was flat in November. That might bode well for further declines in the rate of inflation. By the way, the egg prices, I'm sure with the avian flu affecting the egg prices, that everything that the Fed is doing will help to solve that problem. Anyway, I'm right, sorry, <laughs> moving along. Inflation further down the pipeline was also soft. The wholesale cost of partly finished goods was unchanged while prices of raw materials dropped 1.4%, both negative compared to a year earlier, both negative compared to a year earlier. This is, I think, more important than the rest. What's happening in the pipeline where you're already starting to add labor, you're already starting to add the transportation cost of getting it there. All of these things matter when you get to the CPI, that, that, and that's why you can't, part of why, not all of why, but part of why they don't correlate. But it's, a, it's good. You want the PPI to be lower. It's certainly indicative that we of everything is going well. And this just in, this is from G.R. Dector in, uh, on uh on X, he says, just in, Janet Yellen says inflation heading back to 2%. She doesn't believe the last mile in returning inflation to the Federal Reserve's 2% goal will be especially difficult. Well, Janet and I are on the same page. Inflation is certainly meaningfully coming down, Yellen said. Trueflation continues to show inflation right about 3%. Now, uh, let's see. Optimus Gen 2 video hit last night. Huge improvements. In so many ways, I'm hoping to have Scott, I will have Scott on later today. There is no way that this is not ready for production. There's no way. You could, when you look at it, if you haven't seen it yet, look at, even if you look at the uh, thumbnail that I just used for this video, the Optimus is ready for, that product is ready for production. I don't know how far they are along with the uh, production facility, but they've hired a whole bunch of people to do that. I'm I'm still calling it. I'm saying we're going to be selling or leasing this product to third parties in 2024. We're going to see we're going to see uh, actual revenues from the bot in 2024, and just the idea that that's possible in the mind of somebody who's following it as closely as me, as I am should mean folks would be buying stock in anticipation of that. All right, we've got this from Sawyer Merritt. Uh, Best Western International is partnering with Tesla to bring EV charging stations to 2,000 hotels throughout North America with plans to expand internationally. <laughs> Here we go again. Now, that, that that's not enough to overcome the two pieces of bad news this morning all by itself. Just that should have been enough to overcome. <laughs> How about this? Tesla's Powerwall and LGS's Resu line, R E S U, Rezu, I don't know, line have been among the most popular, well, have been the most popular residential products over the past five years, holding 77% of the cumulative market on uh, the, the, these kinds of energy storage units in the homes. However, their dominance has recently come under pressure from new entrants 
whereas Tesla and LG products were in, installed in 96% of U.S. residential solar plus storage projects in 2018. They're now down to 65%. As we've said so many times before, if you have 100% market share, if you get one or two competitors, you're not going to have 100% market share, but these guys are still the leaders. And Tesla, by the way, makes up 50% by themselves. This from the Kobayashi letter, Kobe, I, I should probably find out how he pronounces that. Breaking, I've, I've asked to talk to him. I've tried to talk to him. He doesn't respond. Uh, U.S. FCC Commissioner Brendan Carr accuses the White House and other government agencies of targeting Elon Musk. No, that's this is official. A U.S. FCC commissioner, Brenda Carr, accuses White House and other government agencies of targeting Elon Musk. Today, Brendan Carr published a dissenting statement after the FCC said it will not award Starlink the $886 million subsidy they deserved for having the only system that would help rural Americans to get better. I'm this, I'm not reading at this point. I'm telling you what happened. He states that Elon Musk companies are being harassed by government agencies. Carr said federal agencies were given the green light to go after Musk following his acquisition of Twitter. It certainly seems to be the case. It's asked the, the article, uh, the uh, uh, ex, uh, Brendan, I'm sorry, not Brendan Carr, but the, uh, the no, the Kobiesi letter asks the question, is Elon Musk being targeted? Yeah, I think so. The full statement issued by Commissioner Carr states that the FCC did not use traditional framework when assessing the Starlink subsidies. It's a bold claim that may be worth investigating. Tesla sent out an email saying that they will guarantee the best price on solar and energy storage for your residents. Does this mean they're about to get serious about this division? Maybe. Are you interested in solar? I have solar on one of my homes. Although it's difficult to draw a conclusion like this from the single trading session, something remarkable is happening in the U.S. stock market on Monday that was that has caught Wall Street's attention and raised fresh questions about leadership in the U.S. stock market going forward. All three major U.S. indexes finished at fresh 52-week highs, with the Dow Jones Industrial Average closing at its highest level in nearly two years, yet not a single member of the MAG-7 finished in the green. Instead, they were all deeply in the red, with every member of the elite group of mega-cap technology stocks finishing at least 1% lower, except Microsoft. Every it, Microsoft was lower, it just wasn't more than 1% lower. How unusual is this to happen? Turns out it's extremely rare for the NASDAQ to finish higher without any help from its most heavily weighted stocks. Monday's sec session marked only the second time since Facebook parent Meta Platforms Inc. made its market debut in 2012. The second time since 2012 that the NASDAQ managed to finish in the green while all seven mega stocks closed in the red. The last time it happened was November 9th in 2016. Uh, that was the day after Donald Trump's upset victory over Hillary Clinton. The article warns that this alone is not to call a, enough to call a rotation. And it might be more due to the NASDAQ reset that I talked about yesterday. But it's more evidence that the rotation is happening. Now, today, last time I looked, the rotation was not happening. We had the normal NASDAQ doing better than the Dow. But we'll check that out in a minute and see where we are. Uh, Barron's has this, the cash that many investors hold is about to be dethroned. Fixed income is a great place to be. The Bloomberg Barclays aggregate, a good proxy for public investment grade bonds, has a yield of 5.16%. At the beginning of 2022, it was 1.87. Many spread products, including IG and high yield, have outperformed. Because that spread advantage, or active risk premium, now comes on top of much higher yields, that can offer amazing opportunities. This is not investment advice. I am not an investment advisor. We recommend a mixed basket of high quality securities, said Barron's, not me. Treasuries, IG, and securitized products, investors concerned about duration shouldn't be. Before it hurt, now it could help. Uh, here's a nice headline this morning about another one of my favorites. Kathy Wood's ARK Investment ETF, the ARKK, is on top for the year again. 
racing back past Fidelity's blue chip growth ETF and the S&P 500. She can. She had one particular stock, the uh, Coinbase, that really, really helped this to happen. But Kathy is back on top. <laughs> she said she would be when the interest rates came down. Uh, not investment advice. I have a little bit of Kathy Wood. Not investment advice. But, um, you know, this is uh, growth stocks, risky growth stocks. As risk come back on, comes back on and interest rates go down, those would normally be expected to go up. All right. So... Um, we need to look at where the market is now. Okay, Tesla is, oh, no, Tesla is down more strongly than it was before. It's now down $3.42. The Dow is actually a little bit down. The NASDAQ is up, uh, the, the Dow is down 14 po uh, points. The NASDAQ is down 30 points. I'm sorry, up 30 points. Sheesh. And the S&P is up $2.54. The Magnificent 7 is all up. So again, the Tesla story this morning is too unbelievable to even contemplate. This is not investment advice. It is sitting at $233.59. I have no dry powder. If I did, I know what I'd be doing right now. Uh, it, this is crazy. I, it, it, absolutely the nuttiest day I can remember in the last four years that I've been watching Tesla stock. All the positive news about Optimus and, and uh, Cybertruck and the, the news about another chain of hotels putting the putting the uh, uh, superchargers in. I mean, it's crazy. And the two things are causing the stock to be down, one of which is over the air update. Uh, it's, 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 it, it, unless there's something else you know, I don't know anything else. Maybe you could put in the uh, comments below if you know something else. All right, let's uh, take a look at these in percentage. We have got the Dow is down fractionally, like, 0.01%, NASDAQ up 0.19%, S&P up 0.06%, Tesla down 1.5%. And then the Kathy Woods are actually down. So the risk stocks, the risk risky stocks are down like Tesla. Tesla has commonly been treated like a Kathy Wood. And this morning, that is what's happening. So that's part, a little bit of it. But why? With the bonds down, so crazy, and the expectation of a of good news or at least neutral news from the Fed. Why would Kathy Wood stocks type stocks might what I call the Kathy Wood risky growth stocks uh, be down this morning? That's unusual as well. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the number. Hey, maybe the bonds are heading up again this morning. That would be crazy. <laughs> no, the bonds are down. So you've got the ten year down almost four basis points uh, at four. Uh, 4.17. Um, if the if there's a little dovishness in what the Fed says today, we could be going under 4%. Uh, not likely, but it's possible. You've got the two month down one basis point. You've got the two year down four basis points. So uh, the two months and, and the, the short termers continue to be uh, inverted more strongly and staying more strongly inverted. The two year, at least in this particular print, we've got the two year closely following the 10 year. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, now we need to go into the rest of the news on the markets. We have got the uh, Bitcoin up a little bit this morning, 230.56% at 41.4. We have got the dollar gaining a bit this morning as it waits for signals. We've got gold creeping up $4.60. Uh, still under 2000 at 1997. We've got oil up a little bit. It had been down strongly, but now it's back up just a tad, but still under 70 at $69.26. You got natural gas down again, 0.91%, sitting at 2.29. And then you've got uh, bonds. We already talked about the bonds. All right. Uh, oh, copper, everybody, got, Larry wants me to always talk about copper. Copper is that tiny bit today, 0.05% down uh, at 3.78. All right, let's see uh, another quick look at Tesla to see if it continues to be so nutty. Ah, it's, uh, nope, nope, it's down even more, down $4. Makes zero sense to me. I can't figure it out. All right, let's see. I'm going to put that card up right now. That Optimus video, it's just a short, it's just a short video. You might want to take a look. If you haven't seen it yet, just hit this card right here and you can go over there and take a look at that video. 
Um, it's uh, like a two and a half minute video. I don't even do much commentary. I just let it play. Uh, you want to see it. Absolutely need to see that video to see this incredible, the, the, it's, it's ready to go. I'm telling you, it's ready to go. So the card is up there. All right. There is, you, you, you get this guy in this little magnetic box, okay? It's got a magnetic opener. Of course, it's impossible for me to open it because I'm stupid. But anyway, it's a great box. It's a this is a gift. I, it's a gift item from the from the get go. Everything about it is designed to be a great gift item. Comes in this box. I mean, very clever, very cool. Um, it's only twenty five dollars if you buy one. It's only twenty two fifty if you buy two. It's only twenty one sixty seven. I think it is if you buy three. Anyway, it's twenty five for one, forty five for two, sixty five for three, ninety for four, and uh, yeah, it keeps on going like that. One hundred and ten for five. And uh, if you buy 10, you get it all the way down to $2 and, uh, and uh, uh, 10 cents a piece. Is that right? $210. And then it goes all the way down to 20. I mean, it, uh, just $20 each. I get, did that all wrong. It's $21. There you go. <laughs> Power of 10 problem again. $21 if you buy 10 and all the way down to $20 if you buy 20 for it's just $400. You send the money to paypal.me forward slash Randy Kirk, all lowercase letters. That's how you do it. It's all, all this information is in the description below. You can go down there and find it. Um, I'll, uh, and then uh, you send that to, you said, you, if you're outside the country, if you're not in a US zip code, you need to add $20, no matter how many you buy, just add one time $20 uh, for out of the country to cover the extra freight. And then of course, let me know stainless or regular, uh, uh, stainless or camo. My, I, my brain has stopped working. There was just too much to do this morning in this show. <laughs> I'm exhausted, but you need to come back for uh, hit the like button. If you haven't already done it, hit subscribe, hit notify and be back here around 11 o'clock, maybe earlier to see what Scott had to say. And Tesla continues to be sitting at down $4 and 26 cents at 232.75. And on that rather sad note, I leave you. It's been great talking to you.